how many people here have ever been told that they couldn't do something? It could be anything, really. I'm talking about anything big or small. Maybe you had an idea for a project, and one of your friends told you that it just wasn't going to work, it wasn't a good idea. Or maybe you wanted to do a certain course at school or at uni, and your parents said it wasn't the right choice and it wouldn't lead you anywhere. Or maybe it's something as simple as you deciding that you wanted to dance and people telling you that you just weren't good at it and you should stop. I'll put my hand up because all of the above has happened to me in some form or another. How could it not have? When we live in such a critical society where people are constantly telling each other what they can't do instead of what they could do. I mean, who here has ever had an idea that they were really excited about? And when you've finally gotten the chance to go and share it with someone, the first thing they've done is try to tell you all the reasons why it wouldn't work. <laughs> I want to do the opposite of those people today. And I want to tell you not just to dream, but to dream big. Have ideas. Finally on track with the slideshow. <laughs> Have ideas. Ideas are amazing things. It can be really difficult, though, I know this personally, to have ideas when you know that other people are going to constantly put you down. So let's just think about a couple of examples of people really overcoming that struggle. J.K. Rowling didn't have it easy. We all know who she is now, but at the time that she wrote the first Harry Potter installment, she was waitressing and receiving public assistance. She was having a really difficult time in life, writing a book that she was really passionate about, and she submitted it to a dozen publishers and got a dozen rejections. She finally only got the book published because the CEO of the publishing company's daughter ran the manuscript and begged him to. And now she's worth a billion dollars, and the concept that started as just an idea in her head one day is worth 15 billion. We'd all know Thomas Edison as the guy who invented the light bulb. He was seen as a really weird kid in school. He fidgeted, he had a hearing impairment, so nobody really took him seriously. His teachers told him that he was too stupid to learn anything and would never do anything with his life. So he got kicked out of school after only three months, and his mum homeschooled him. Now, I know what you're probably thinking at this stage. These are two examples, and those people happen to overcome whatever it is that they had, but it's not common, right? And if you have an idea, you're probably thinking, OK, fantastic, but what if I fail? Thomas Edison once said that he hadn't failed. He just found 10,000 ways that didn't work. I love that statement. Don't you love that? Because if you fail at something, really all it means is that you found a way that doesn't work. So if you learn from that example, you won't do it again, and you'll make progress. And that's how people improve. We all know Michael Jordan as the man who became the greatest basketball player of his time. But he didn't even make his high school basketball team. He only got where he is through resili well, resilience, passion, and hard work. So I want everyone here to think about that next time they don't get something that they tried for. Michael Jordan didn't even make his high school basketball team. Now, at this stage, you're probably thinking, that's great. Some of these examples are a bit cliched. What does this have to do with us? Or who are you? So I just want to tell you a little bit about my story so you can see where I'm coming from when I'm telling you that I think these things are really important. So this is a picture of me when I was a kid. Oh, that's nice, thank you. Um, as you can probably tell from the hair, same person. Um, and luckily, I grew into my forehead. Now, it was pretty big. Like, it's ridiculous looking at those pictures. <laughs> so I didn't have the rosiest childhood in the world. When I was a kid, I had an extremely violent and abusive father. So my parents got divorced when I was really small. And I was raised by my single mom and my nana in Perth's northern suburbs. Growing up in the area that I did, it was kind of common that people tried to constantly put each other down. And I don't know if it's a con like a conscious thing, but it is something that I find is really Australian. And I don't know if a lot of people have had that experience too, but it's tall poppy syndrome, right? If someone's excelling at something, you've just got to cut their ego down. That's how people see it. You just shave, shave off that confidence. And I've always been a really big dreamer. I've always had a lot of things that I wanted to do and a lot of really big ideas. And I wasn't afraid to tell people about it because I had a really supportive mom. My nana was great. I had a couple of good teachers, but I met a lot of criticism. 
I would tell people that before I really understood what it meant, to be perfectly fair, that I wanted to join the UN. And I had people actually laugh right in my face and tell me that it would never happen for someone like me. But because my family was there for me, I was able to lift myself up and keep trying. But as we get older, life becomes more complicated and it can be really hard to hold dear those dreams that we had when we were a kid. Three years ago, my mom got diagnosed with stage four melanoma and she had less than a 10% chance of survival. She had part of her spine removed and she couldn't work, so I had to stop going to uni and get a full-time job to support my family. And then, only a couple of weeks after that, my nana died. Now, I think it would have been really reasonable for me to have given up then. And I don't think it would have been something that I would have felt ashamed of, right? Like, a lot of things were going on. It's fair enough if you're not at uni. But I decided that wasn't good enough. I believed enough in my dreams that I decided it wasn't going to stop me. So I enrolled in online courses, and I finished my degree quite unconventionally, and I still managed to graduate on time from UWA with a distinction average. Now, I'm a master's student at the Australian National University, studying humanitarian action, which is my passion. And guess what? I'm moving to New York in November because I got a position at the UN. It's possible. <laughs> and I... Thank you. But the point is that I'm just a kid from Perth, just the northern suburbs of Perth. I don't come from money. I don't come from privilege. We're all privileged in different ways, yes. But you don't have to have this predetermined set of circumstances to decide who you're going to be in life. And that's true. But believing that when you really need to can be such a difficult thing. The only thing I want you to really take away from this is that you need to let yourself dream and you need to let yourself have ideas. Because if other people try to put you down, you need to be strong enough to be OK with that and keep going anyway. I'm fortunate enough to have helped create an amazing movement in Perth called Perth Soup. Soup's really about exactly that. It's about having an idea and being not too afraid to share it with people. So at Soup, people come together. We hear from four ideas that have the potential to do something great for the city. And then we vote on our favorite. And then, of course, we have Soup, the name. So we're able to make immediate impact. If people come, they donate $10 and all that cash is pulled up and just given to whoever we like most. There's none of this bureaucracy getting involved. So if 100 people come, we give $1,000 cash to just some person who came in with a great idea. And it's not just about the money, it's about supporting each other and allowing each other to have those dreams and not be afraid of failing. Because failure is always going to happen. It's just how you deal with it that matters. I'm really fortunate to be in a part of a community now where that reinforcement constantly happens. But I know that people are always going to try to put you down in life. There's nothing any of us can do about it. It's not avoidable, unfortunately. But you need to be strong enough that it doesn't matter. If someone tells you that you can't, you need to remember that you can. We all can. Because your ideas matter, your dreams matter, and you need to have faith in yourself. No one can decide for you what you're going to do with your life but yourself. Thank you.